Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India welcome in this session we are going to discuss yet another rna neurotopic virus that is rabies virus now rabies is acutely progressive fatal disease caused by rabies and rabies related viruses which belong to family rhabdoviridae now rabies is the most dreaded disease known since antiquity and it is still without any cure now it is a zoonotic disease prevalent in uh, domestic as well as in wild animals and is usually transmitted by the bite of infected animal it is still a major public health problem because the virus is uh, uh, widespread among the animal reservoirs and it is almost always fatal the name rabies it was obtained because of the dramatic and extraordinary manifestations of rage and anger which are associated with the disease so in this session the we are going to discuss rabies virus with the following objectives so at the end of the session you will be able to classify rabies virus you will be able to describe structure of rabies virus you will be able to describe pathogenesis and pathogenicity of rabies virus clinical manifestations and laboratory diagnosis of rabies epidemiology and prophylaxis of rabies now rabies virus is classified in family rhabdoviridae so the rabies and rabies related viruses they belong to genus lysa virus in rhabdoviridae family the virus has helical symmetry it is cylindrical in shape so the virus particle has bullet shaped or rod shaped the dimensions are 180 nanometer to 75 nanometer and the one end of the virus it is rounded or conical and the other end is usually planar or concave the virion particle it is surrounded by a lipoprotein envelope where the lipid part is derived from the host membrane and the protein is virus coded the envelope it is studded with uh, knob shaped glycoprotein spikes and uh, which are about 10 nanometer long below the envelope there is a, a layer of a matrix protein the nucleocapsid has helical symmetry and the genome is consists of single stranded negative sense non segmented rna it also contains rna dependent rna polymerase the genome encodes five proteins nucleoprotein n phosphoprotein p matrix protein protein m glycoprotein gene and polymerase l there are two important antigens of rabies virus the most important is glycoprotein or g antigen it is associated with the peplomers which are embedded in the envelope now this antigen that is glycoprotein antigen it is species specific antigen now it plays very important role in the pathogenesis and the virulence of the virus it binds to the acetylcholine receptor which are present on the neural tissue so which is the first step in the pathogenesis of rabies virus now this antigen it is hemagglutinin in nature which agglutinates rbcs and hence the antibodies against this antigen can be detected in patient serum by hemagglutination inhibition test the antigen in purified form can be used as a subunit vaccine the second important antigen of rabies virus is nucleoprotein antigen now this antigen is associated with the capsid protein it is a group specific antigen so it is shared by the other rabies related viruses this antigen it does not have any role in the pathogenesis this antigen can be detected by immunofluorescence test the antibodies against this antigen can be detected by complement fixation test the antigen is not suitable for the vaccine preparation now when the rabies virus is isolated from naturally occurring rabies cases the virus 
it is pathogenic to almost all mammals, warm blooded animals and it has long incubation period. So, this virus which is isolated from a naturally occurring cases of rabies is known as street virus. It is pathogenic for all mammals, it has long variable incubation period and it shows formation of inclusion bodies in the infected cell. When this virus it is serially passaged in a rabbit by intracerebral inoculation, the virus gets transformed and the biological properties of the virus changed and this virus a newly transformed virus is known as fixed virus. So, this fixed virus is does not multiply in the extra neural tissue, it has short incubation period as against the strict virus and it rarely produces inclusion bodies. So, fixed virus is usually uh, employed for the preparation of the vaccine in the laboratories. Now, rabies virus it is found in wild as well as in domestic animals. So, it is a virus it is pathogenic to all warm blooded uh, mammals including human beings. It shows variable susceptibility. The animals like wolves, jackals, foxes they show they are very highly susceptible whereas, uh, the animals like cattle, cats, dogs, bats, uh, raccoons they show intermediate susceptibility whereas, opossums they are highly resistant to the infection by rabies virus. Now, this varying susceptibility by the animal is because of the varying distribution of the acetyl nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So, when virus enter, enters uh, the body it, the, it gets attached to the acetylcholine receptors. So, the varying presence of acetylcholine receptors is responsible for the different susceptibilities demonstrated by the different animals. Now, coming to the pathogenesis of rabies virus. Now, the infection is usually transmitted by the bite of an inf infected animal or mucous membrane exposure. The after the entry the virus first gets attached to the acetylcholine uh, receptors uh, by means of glycoprotein peplomers. The virus multiplies in the acetylcholine receptors and after when the sufficient concentration of virus particles is uh, achieved, it enters the nervous system through the unmyelinated uh, axon terminals. Now, virus ascends to the central nervous system via an exoplasmic flow at the rate of 12 to 24 millimeters per day uh, and uh, until it reaches the first neuronal body which is usually present in the uh, which is usually a spinal ganglion. Now, when virus multiplies in the spinal ganglion the first symptoms which are specific for the rabies that is tingling and pain is present at the site of the bite. After that the virus spreads rapidly in the central nervous system and then it multiplies in the neurons of the cortex and the brain stem and the other sites in the brain. The produces encephalitis and then uh, it spreads to the peripheral organs. Uh, so, the centrifugal spread occurs via the peripheral nerves. The virus spreads to the various organs like, uh, like skin, cornea, other organs almost all organs get involved, but uh, there is the specific concentration of virus occurs in the salivary gland which uh, facilitates the dissemination of the virus. Now, the incubation period it is usually between 20 and 90 days. The virus is usually transmitted most commonly by the bite of the infected animal, but sometimes the virus can also be transmitted by the transplantation of the organs or tissues which are infected with the virus. So, the cases with organ transplantation like corneal transplant, kidney and liver transplant have also been reported. So, the usual incubation period is about 20 to 90 days, but the incubation period as short as 4 days and as long as 19 years has also been reported in the literature. The incubation period is influenced by various factors like inoculum size, the virulence of the viral strain, the number of bite wounds and the severity of the bite. 
and it is also associated with the proximity to the CNS. Basically, the incubation period depends upon the time required by the virus to reach the central nervous system. So, it is usually short in children, it is short in short people and it is also short when the wounds they are present on head, neck or face or on the upper extremity. Now, coming to the clinical features, the clinical features of rabies they can be described in three phases. The first is prodromal phase. The prodromal phase is characterized by presence of fever, body aches, sore throat and insomnia. So, all these are non-specific symptoms and at this stage it is very difficult to diagnose rabies on the basis of clinical findings unless there is a specific history of a bite by a rabid animal. The prodromal phase usually lasts for 3 or 4 days. The only specific symptom that is usually present in the prodromal phase is the presence of tingling and numbness or pain at the site of the bite. The prodromal phase it is followed by a neurologic phase. Usually two types of neurologic phases have been observed in rabies patients. Either it is a furious or encephalitic type of rabies that type of a neurologic phase or a paralytic type of neurologic phase. Now, the furious or encephalitic type of rabies is the most commonly observed acute neurologic phase. Almost in 75 percent of the rabies patients this type of rabies is seen. Now, the furious or encephalitic rabies it is characterized by hyper excitability in the form of anxiety, agitation, disorientation and breathlessness which alters with the uh, lucid intervals. Now, there is also uh, signs of autonomic dysfunction in the form of increased lacrimation, pupillary dilatation, hypersalivation and excessive sweating. The patient usually becomes intolerant to noise, bright light and cold draft of air. The most pathognomonic feature of furious encephalitis is presence of hydrophobia and aerophobia. Now, hydrophobia is fear for water and aerophobia is fear for air. The hydrophobia the most pathognomonic feature is because of the laryngeal spasm um, which is usually whenever there is patient uh, attempts to drink any liquid. Now, the hydrophobia or this spasm is because of the involvement of the uh, neurons surrounding the ambiguous nucleus. So, this is because of the brain stem encephalitis. The another type of rabies is paralytic or dumb rabies. Now, it is usually seen in partially vaccinated or um, uh, persons who are infected with bat rabies. Now, the dumb rabies or paralytic rabies it is characterized by flaccid paralysis. So, the paralysis first develops in the limb which is affected by the bite and then it uh, progresses to the other extremities and then there is involvement of uh, respiratory muscles. Now, the acute neurologic phase it is followed by a phase of coma. So, the patient goes into uh, this third phase usually after 10 days of the onset of the symptoms. The death occurs usually because of the convulsions which occur during acute neurologic phase or respiratory failure which occurs during the phase of coma. Almost uh, the, the case fatality rate is almost 100 percent in rabies infection. There are very few uh, reported cases in the literature who have survived rabies infection after onset of the symptoms. Now, the, the, rabies is exotic in both domestic as well as wild animals. So, the human rabies is uh, present in all the continents except Australia and Antarctica. There are about 50 countries where the there are no reports of rabies which are because of the geographic isolation or because of the control of rabies in the domestic animal or because of the strict quarantine measures. The majority of the deaths due to rabies occur in Asia and Africa. So, nearly 50,000 human deaths are reported worldwide every year. Rabies is endemic in India and it is reported almost from all parts of India except for Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep Islands. 
So, nearly 60 percent of the death reported all over the world are seen in India. So, more than 20,000 deaths occur every year in India. Now, coming to laboratory diagnosis of rabies. Now, the, the differential diagnosis of rabies uh, actually it includes any uh, cause of acute encephalitis. So, the most important causes that are to be excluded are the encephalitis caused by herpes viruses like herpes simplex virus type 1, varicella zoster virus, then enteroviruses like Coxsackie viruses, polio and enteric cytopathogenic human orphan viruses and herboviruses like Japanese encephalitis virus and West Nile virus. The various specimen that are collected for the laboratory diagnosis are the skin biopsy which is taken from the nuchal area containing hair follicles with peripheral nerves, the corneal smears and various body fluids like saliva, spinal fluid, tears and tissues. Blood can be collected for the demonstration of antibodies and brain biopsy uh, is actually the gold standard for the uh, laboratory diagnosis, but it is not suitable for antimortem diagnosis. So, the most important specimen which are collected are skin biopsy, corneal smears and body fluids. Now, the laboratory diagnosis of rabies is um, though it is 100 percent fatal, it is essential when an aggressive approach for the treatment is considered and it is also important the, for the prevention of the spread of the infection to the healthcare worker. For these two reasons, laboratory diagnosis of rabies is extremely important. So, the various modalities used for the laboratory diagnosis of rabies are the direct de detection of method, antibody detection, isolation and molecular methods. Now, direct detection method is the most commonly used method for uh, antimortem as well as postmortem diagnosis of rabies. So, the direct detection method includes microscopic examination of the material like brain tissue which can be stained with a routine H and E st uh, stain or which can also be stained with a special stains like cellar technique which uses methylene blue and basic carbol fish chain. So, in microscopic examination the encephalitic changes can be observed and in special stains or in even in routine stains the presence of intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies can be used uh, for the diagnosis. The most important, the most commonly used method for direct detection is the demonstration of antigen. So, antigen is demonstrated using direct fluorescent antibody test. So, the, this test can be performed on the various specimens like skin biopsy, corneal impressions, etc. for diagnosis of babies. The antibody can also be demonstrated. So, the usually the antibodies appear after the 7 days of the onset of the symptoms. Now, the presence of antibodies in the smear it could also be because of the vaccination. So, there has to be high titer of the antibodies or the to be demonstrated in the CSF. So, when antibodies are demonstrated in the CSF that is 100 percent uh, indication of the presence of rabies. The antibody detection can be done by various methods like indirect immunofluorescence, virus neutralization test, rapid fluorescent focus inhibition test which is an in vitro neutralization test done using cell culture and the last is heme agglutination inhibition test. So, these are the commonly used methods for demonstration of antibodies in serum as well as in CSA. The other methods are the virus culture. So, virus culture can be done using intracerebral mouse inoculation. So, the intracerebral inoculation is done uh, in suckling mouse or it can also be done in vitro cell culture inoculation. So, the commonly used cell lines are mouse neuroblastoma cell line and baby hamster kidney cell line. Now, the viral growth in infected animal as well as in uh, in vitro cell culture can be demonstrated by direct immunofluorescence test. Nowadays, the most commonly used methods are the molecular methods. So, reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction is the uh, 
most sensitive and the specific method available for the diagnosis of rabies. Reverse transcriptase heminated polymerase chain reaction which targets L polymerase gene considered to be the 100 percent specific method for the diagnosis of rabies. The postmortem diagnosis, diagnosis in human beings as well as in animals can be done by demonstration of negri bodies. Now, negri bodies are the inclusion bodies which are eosinophilic intracytoplasmic magenta colored bodies which are present in the cytoplasm of the infected neurons. So, these are sharply demarcated spherical to oval bodies about to 10, 2 to 10 micron in size and they are most commonly observed in the neurons of the cerebellum and hippocampus. They are pathognomonic of the rabies. However, they may not be present in the 20 percent of the cases. Now, coming to the management. Now, the treatment of the rabies is aimed at the prevention of the development of the rabies. So, uh, the most important aim is to prevent the rabies virus to spread to the central nervous system from the site of the inoculation. So, the management or treatment it involves local wound care to remove the as much of virus as possible before it is adsorbed on the nerve endings. And the second part in the treatment is to give the post exposure prophylaxis so that the antibodies are produced which will neutralize the inoculated virus before it reaches the nervous system. So, the basic aim of the management or treatment is to prevent the spread of the virus to the central nervous system either by inactivation or by the neutralization of the virus with the uh, help of the antibodies. So, the local wound care it involves cleaning of the wound immediately with lot of water and soap. Now, this virus rabies virus is an enveloped virus. So, application of soap inactivates the virus. So, it is important to clean the wound as soon as possible with plenty of water and soap. Then antiseptics like 70 percent alcohol and tincture or aqueous solution of the iodine or povidone iodine can also be used. Now, the suturing of the wound is strictly contra contraindicated. It should not be sutured immediately because it can cause additional trauma and it can facilitate the spread of the virus to the deeper tissues. Then the passive immunization is given for the neutralization of the virus with the ready made ant antibodies. So, for passive immunization the rabies immunoglobulins are administered locally. The two types of rabies immunoglobulins are available, equine rabies immunoglobulin which are given in the dose of 40 international units per kg body weight or human rabies immunoglobulins which are given in the dose of uh, 20 international units per kg body weight. Now, the maximum amount of rabies immunoglobulin should be administered locally and if some amount is left behind then it has to be administered intramuscularly at the site away from the site used for the injection of the vaccine. Now, the equine rabies immunoglobulin because it is obtained from a different species it can be associated with the hypersensitivity reactions. Now, coming to the post exposure prophylaxis. Now, for post exposure prophylaxis two types of vaccines are available neural vaccines and non neural vaccines. The neural vaccines they are derived from the rabies infected nervous tissue of animals. Now, these vaccines because they contain nervous tissue of different animals they are encephalatogenic and hence they are associated with the harmful effects and they are no longer used. Non neural vaccines are the most commonly used vaccines for post exposure prophylaxis. Now, non neural vaccines they are again of three different types egg derived vaccines, recombinant vaccines and cell culture derived vaccines. The egg derived vaccines they are uh, prepared using either the duck egg or embryonated cheek, but these vaccines they are not highly immunogenic and they are no longer in use because the better vaccines are available. Recombinant vaccines they are also not uh, still not available for the human use. So, the most commonly available vaccine for the human use are the cell culture derived vaccines. The three vaccines are commonly available purified chick embryo cell vaccine 
which is prepared using chicken fibroblast cell line, purified well, uh, vero cell vaccine, which is prepared using vero cell line, and human diploid cell vaccine, which is prepared using human embryonic fibroblast cell line that is WR38. Now, the potency of the vaccine, the each dose should contain a 2.5 international unit and the dose is same for all the three types of the vaccines. Now, the regime for the post exposure prophylaxis, it depends upon the category of the risk. Now, the risk categorization done on the basis of the type of the exposure. Three categories of risks are identified, category 1, category 2 and category 3. Now, category 1, it is it constitute it is just nothing but touching uh, or feeding of the animal or leaks of the uh, animal on the intact, intact skin. So, it does not constitute any risk. So, this is category 1 and does not require any uh, prophylaxis. The category 2 is minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding on the skin or nibbling of uncovered skin. Now, for this type of category, the prophylaxis required is the wound management, then give, giving rabies vaccine and uh, observing the dog for 10 days. The category 3 are the types of exposure where there are transdermal bites or leaks on the broken skin or mucous membrane or there is a bite by wild animal. So, for this type of category, the prophylaxis required is wound management, infiltration of the rabies immunoglobulin globulin at the site of the bite, giving rabies vaccine and observing the dog for 10 days. So, the two different types of regimens are usually employed. The intramuscular regimen also known as ESEN regimen, which includes giving 5 doses uh, of 0.5 or 1 ml, uh, which are given intramuscularly on day 0, 3, 7, 14 and 28. The another regime commonly used is intradermal regime. So, for intradermal regime, two intradermal doses are given on each days. So, 0.1 ml is given intradermally on 0, 3, 7 and 28 days. Now, the post exposure prophylaxis in India is recommended after bite of any animal except bite of rodents. There is no contraindication for giving post exposure prophylaxis. So, it can be given to pregnant women as well as it can be given during pregnancy. Now, there are no reports of human to human transmission or person to person transmission. However, the virus is present in the uh, secretions like it is present in the saliva. So, there is always uh, potential of transmission of the disease. Hence, it is important that all the attending healthcare workers adopt uh, standard precautions and use personal protective equipment whenever attending the patient. The pre-exposure prophylaxis, it is recommended in high risk groups. So, it is usually recommended for the laboratory staff handling infected material to the clinicians attending the patients, veterinarians and persons who handle animals. The regime for pre-exposure prophylaxis includes three doses of 0.5 ml of vaccine administration intramuscularly on 0, 7 and 21 or 28 days. The booster dose is given after 6 months if the antibody level after 6 months is less than 0 0.5 international units per ml. In 90 percent of the cases of human rabies, the disease is transmitted by the bite of rabid dogs. Hence, it is important to understand the manifestation of rabies in dogs. The incubation period in dogs is usually 3 to 6 weeks. Like in human beings, two forms of disease is observed. One is furious or mad dog syndrome and second is dumb or paralytic. In furious type of rabies in dogs, the animal becomes aggressive and uh, it runs amok and uh, it bites without any provocation. The virus is present in the infected dog 3 to 4 days before dog becomes symptomatic. Hence, 
whenever there is do, uh, case of dog bite, it is important to observe the animal at least for the 10 days. Now, in uh, dogs, the immunization is the most effective way of control. So, to summarize, rabies is an acute progressive fatal encephalomyelitis caused by highly neurotropic rabies virus. It is a zoonotic disease of warm blooded animals usually transmitted by the bite of an infected uh, or rabid dog. It is a disease with highest fatality rate for any infectious disease. So, 100 percent fatality rate has been observed. Rabies virus is a bullet shaped negative sense RNA virus. The pathognomonic feature of the disease is hydrophobia and aerophobia. The reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction is the most sensitive and the specific method available for the diagnosis. Demonstration of negri bodies is the gold standard for postmortem diagnosis of rabies and post exposure prophylaxis is given to prevent the virus spreading to the central nervous system so that the um, person does not develop rabies after uh, bite with an infected animal. Thank you.